time to learn more about a legend in the world of natural bodybuilding and fitness. A true giant in the field whose legacy is still felt today. His name was Vince Gironda, and he was known as the Iron Guru. He didn't get this name because he liked eating spinach. Nope. Vince was all about lifting heavy iron and creating bodybuilding champions, and not with the use of steroids like the monsters of today. Vince was all natural and adamant that you could naturally build the perfect physique using only nutrition and sound exercise science. Vince Gironda was a maverick, a nonconformist, a visionary ahead of his time. And you can't help but respect his relentless pursuit of body science, his tireless work ethic, and his diehard passion for the sport of bodybuilding and helping regular people achieve a body they never would have thought possible for themselves. To understand the man, the myth, and the legend of the Iron Guru, we have to go back to where it all began. Vincent Anselmo Gironda was born in 1917 on the 9th of November in Bronx, New York. When he was seven years old, Vince moved to California with his family because his father was contracted to be a stuntman in the original Ben-Hur film. Vince was a precocious boy and excelled in all sorts of sports and athletic activities. This included things like gymnastics, horseback riding, shot put, pole vault, hurdles, relay, and even cross country. In fact, as a youth, he set several records in shot put and pole vault. As he got older, he decided to follow in his father's footsteps and become a stuntman. However, this wasn't in the cards for a young Vince. He was told he was too small and skinny to ever be a real stuntman. So, at the age of 22, he signed up at the local YMCA to start lifting some weights to see if he could put a little more muscle on his small frame. He didn't know it then, but that small decision set off a chain reaction that would impact all of us, even you watching this video right now. Vince took to weight training like a fish takes to water. He got it and instantly started seeing size gains. He also had a knack for detail. He helped people with their form and eventually became a personal trainer at Easton Brothers Fitness Center. He spent years there honing his craft and really studying the human body. It was here he first started his wild experiments, which would later turn him into a celebrity and the legend known as the Iron Guru. Finally, in 1948, Vince decided he needed to have his own place to call home, a place where he could continue his nutrition and exercise experiments without the looks and judgment by the Easton Brothers crowd. So he set up shop in Studio City, California, in the north of Hollywood, and opened a tiny gym on a busy corner of the city. This little gym needed a name, and since Vince wasn't big on fluff, he called it Vince's Gym. Of course, this little gym would go on to become world famous, and it was even featured in the movie Boogie Nights. Vince spent years working on his physique and ended up creating an amazing body. Proportionate, cut, ripped, whatever you want to call it, it's the body most men want. So Vince started competing in bodybuilding competitions all over the country. Remember, back then, bodybuilding was relatively new. There was no Mr. Olympia yet. That wouldn't happen until 1975. And here's the craziest part about Vince's life back then. Although he competed in hundreds of competitions, he never won a single contest. He played second and third all the time, but never first. So why didn't he ever win? Well, as one judge in the 1950s put it, Vince was too ripped. They didn't like that his body was absolutely shredded with a low fat percentage. They actually liked the puffier, fatter look. This didn't deter Vince, though. He kept competing and creating his own book of secrets. Later in life, Vince would train celebrities like Clint Eastwood and Carl Weathers. He trained his star pupil, Larry Scott, to win the first two Mr. Olympia competitions. And Vince kept on training and creating bodybuilding techniques that are still in use today. Next time, we'll talk more about Vince's gym, a true Hollywood gem. Many people may not recognize the name Vince Gironda, but many do remember hearing the name Vince's Gym. This is because Vince's Gym became a cultural landmark in North Hollywood, California. While it didn't get the accolades and fanfare that Gold's Gym received, it was arguably the most important gym in the world for bodybuilders. And that's because the namesake of the gym, Vince Gironda himself, was there every day training his pupils to be their absolute best. Starting in 1948 and lasting all the way to 1995, Vince's gym was a virtual celebrity hotspot. Vince trained many famous clients right there at the gym. 
there was no other place like it on Earth. In fact, on any given day of the week, you might bump into stars like Clint Eastwood, James Garner, Carl Weathers, Tommy Chong of Cheech and Chong, Sean Penn, and Eric Estrada. Vince became famous not just as a bodybuilder, but as a body sculptor. That is why starting in the 60s through the 80s, Hollywood sent their leading men and ladies to him to get in shape for upcoming roles. Remember how absolutely jacked Carl Weathers looked playing Apollo Creed? You can thank Vince Gironda. Now, if all Vince did at his gym was train movie stars, that would be more than enough to earn him a high-ranking position in the world of personal trainers, but he did so much more than that. In the early 1960s, a young man named Larry Scott entered Vince's gym. Vince didn't think too much of him at first. He wasn't very big and didn't seem to have the kind of frame or build that would be good for a pro bodybuilder. But Vince saw his dedication and that he showed up every single day and did whatever he was told. That's when Vince concocted his plan he would turn Larry Scott into a champion. They trained for several years together, gearing up for the first ever Mr. Olympia competition, basically the Super Bowl of bodybuilding competitions. Larry had smaller arms, so Vince had to create a strategy to make his arms look massive. He personally built a new bicep exercise just for Larry. You may have heard of this exercise before. People started calling it the Preacher Curl. You see, Vince was a mad scientist when it came to experimenting with the human body. He built every machine in the gym himself, many of which are now commonplace in gyms all over the world. And when it comes to nutrition, he was 50 years ahead of everyone else. Ever heard of the keto diet? Vince was teaching keto back in the 1950s. He wrote a whole pamphlet about the importance of eating steak and eggs. He even predicted that scientists and nutritionists had eggs all wrong. He was proven right when more than 50 years later, we are finally being told that eggs are good for us again. And believe it or not, red meat is making a comeback now too. Vince was so far ahead of his time that his competitors and enemies would spread lies that he was crazy and to avoid Vince's gym at all costs because he was peddling pseudoscience. Well, many of the naysayers had no choice but to eat their words on September 18, 1965. You see, that was the day that Larry Scott stepped on the stage at the first ever Mr. Olympia. When he first walked out, people paused and just stared. They had never seen a body like that before. His arms were massive. His chest was a perfect V-shape, the kind we all dream of having. His golden locks flowed almost as if they were in the wind. Someone in the crowd screamed, he's a Greek god. And the crowd of spectators proceeded to cheer the entire time Larry performed his routine. You couldn't hear anything but the sounds of screaming and chanting, Larry, Larry, Larry. When the dust had settled, Larry was crowned the first ever Mr. Olympia, and he won again the next year before deciding to retire. One of Vince's students ran to the phone to call Vince back in California to let him know what happened. The story goes that when Vince heard Larry had not only won, but demolished the competition, he broke down crying. Vindication! He never won a championship himself, but he had trained the greatest bodybuilding champion in the world. And remember, this is long before the days of steroids and chemicals. Some say Vince cried because he was sad he never had the chance to win. Others say it's because he was so proud of Larry. But knowing Vince, he cried because he knew the naysayers couldn't say anything anymore about his crazy methods. Vince and Vince's gym became famous that day in 1965. Bodybuilders and movie stars the world over would flock to his gym. People like the Hulk, Lou Ferrigno, another Mr. Olympia, Frank Zane, and even a very young, pudgy-faced Arnold Schwarzenegger. Vince's gym closed up in 1995, making it almost 50 years. Vince died less than two years later, in part because his precious gym was gone. Though Vince died in 1997, his legacy lives on to this day. There was only one Vince Gironda, that's for sure. There was no one like him before, and there'll never be another like him. Vince was a maverick, and one of a kind. His legacy is cemented in the bodybuilding world. After training multiple Mr. Olympia champions, no one could doubt his methods any longer, even though many try even to this day. Unfortunately, his fame never carried him as far as it should have. Many have called Vince the Nikolai Tesla of the bodybuilding world. If you recall, 
Tesla invented alternating current energy as well as radio wave technology, but he never got the credit or the monetary reward. Tesla didn't care about the money. He tore up his patent on AC energy, a patent that would have been worth trillions today. Edison took all the credit for Tesla's hard work, and sadly, Nikolai died broke and alone in a New York City apartment. Just like Tesla, Vince was never driven by money, yet he created amazing things. He created the preacher curl, the sissy squat, the drag curl, Gironda dips, the chest level chin up, and even the fabled seated row. He taught low carb and keto protocols as far back as the 1950s. People around him thought he was crazy and he rarely charged for this information. He would impress a crowd at parties by having them point to any muscle on their body. Not only could he name the muscle, he could name all the connecting muscles, point out the connective tissue or joints, and tell you exactly how that muscle worked, what it did, and most importantly, show five or six different ways to work out that muscle properly. He invented a specific training protocol called the 10 by 10, and later the 8 by 8 and the 6 by 6. Even though Vince created this protocol, a group in Germany popularized it, and Vince's 10x10 became known as German Volume Training. Vince was no slouch when it came to nutrition either. He taught intermittent and extended fasting before it was even studied. He studied supplements as well and was one of the first people ever to suggest taking amino acids to help build muscle. He realized way back then that protein broke down into amino acids, so he actually founded a company called NSP Research Nutrition in 1972 with Ron Kosloff. Together, they created the supplements used by actors, actresses, athletes, and world champion bodybuilders. Vince had a five-day fast protocol where you only consumed amino acid pills. This burned your fat while sparing all the muscle. He realized that beef liver was a secret energy source, so he created desiccated beef liver pills that are still used today. He knew that milk and egg were two of the best protein sources, way better than whey protein. So he created the world's first milk and egg protein powder, a product NSP Nutrition still sells to this day. The other way in which Vince was like Tesla was with his personality. If Vince liked you, you were all set. But he didn't like many people, and he liked to test people. One of the best stories about Vince involves a very young, newly arrived to the country, Arnold. He had read about Vince's gym in all the magazines, so that was the first place he went when he arrived. He walked in and marched right up to Vince. He stuck out his hand and said, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Universe. Vince looked Arnold up and down, taking in every inch of his giant frame. He then paused for a second and said, Well, you look just like a big fat to me. To say Vince had a way with people would be putting it mildly. Thankfully, Arnold stayed and trained with Vince and learned many of his secrets. Arnold later talked about what he learned at Vince's gym in his best-selling autobiography. It's extremely difficult to capture the legacy of Vince Geronda. His methods and techniques were absorbed by the mainstream slowly over time. If you tell someone you're eating low-carb or doing a short fast, many won't bat an eye. But in some small way, that way of eating came through the mind of Vince Geronda. When you're at the gym doing a preacher curl or a drag curl, you can thank Vince for that. When you're doing dips or a chin-up, again, thank Vince. Vince died in 1997, an old man without any regrets. Thankfully, his legacy lives on through all the courses, books, seminars, and notes he left behind. And of course, his supplement company, NSP Nutrition, continues to this day selling the same high-quality products Vince personally designed and sourced all those years ago. There aren't many people who change the world and the people in it, and there are even less who have a cultural impact. Vince was able to change the world, the bodybuilding culture, and leave a lasting legacy as the Iron Guru, trainer to the stars and the sculptor of world champion bodybuilders. Next time you're at the gym working out, be sure to thank Vince Duranda.